Hey guys, in this episode we're going to continue working on the gutter system as well as the rain barrel that will be uh, located at the front side of the solar shed. So let's get started. Good morning guys, I'm working on uh, the gutters for the new overhang on the solar shed. And in order to make these gutters work, what I need to do is build a spacer that's going to run along the top of the beam. And so what I've done is I've taken 2 by 4s and I have widened them or thickened them with this, what appears to be like 3 8 inch plywood. This will bring it out flush with the vertical posts that are on the outside of that beam. So now after this, this will run the, these will run the entire length. The gutter then will be attached right to this face here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything stained before I install it. Okay, I've got the filler material stained and installed. Next step is going to be getting the uh, gutter material. These filler materials again brought this. This is brought to the same height as the post so that the edge of the uh, of the roof panels don't buckle or pop up over the posts. And it also gives me a place now that goes flat across the front of the beam to secure the gutter material. So I just got back from the hardware store and I picked up some four inch PVC gutter material. This is the same gutter material I used on the other side of the solar shed. And this being the north side, it won't get a whole lot of sun exposure, so I'm not too concerned about it degrading. Uh, what I did was I had five feet of this left over from the previous installation, so I bought a 10-footer. And as a result, the gutter is going to not go the entire span of the overhang. There's going to be about eight inches on either side that's not going to have gutter in front of it. But that's the way it goes. So I put in gutter supports. I have a pitch, a slight pitch already calculated. The downspout is going to go right here. And the downspout, what I did was I bought, let me show you. That's a three inch downspout adapter. This will adapt it to round PVC, three inch PVC with a coupler. This is just a drain coupler. So that'll go on the downspout portion up here. And that'll allow us to use a straight piece of PVC, three inch PVC as a downspout. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of uh, nice plywood and I'm gonna cut a circle to cover this and then I'm going to cut a circle allowing access for that drain pipe to go in the center. And then we're going to be able to use this as like a little table outside here. This morning I installed the adapter from a 3-inch downpipe to a 3-inch Schedule 40 PVC. And now what I'm going to do is take some measurements and make the top, the tabletop for this rain barrel. I've been thinking about it and I was originally going to buy some plywood and I thought maybe I can make something out of some of the wood that I've got laying around. So I just need to get a measurement of this and uh, see if I can put something together. So let's see what we got here. We got a 30 inch diameter and I'm going to want it to hang over about an inch. So I'm going to make it 32 inches in diameter. This is recessed a little bit, so what I'm going to do is, after I make the tabletop, I'll put some pieces that will allow it to key in or lock in when it's sitting on the rain barrel itself. So let me go check my wood pile and see what I got to work with. I've got some wood put together that'll work for the tabletop. It actually took more than I thought it would, and I might have just been it might have just been easier to get a piece of plywood, but I'm going to give this a shot. So what I wanted was about an inch overhang, and to create that inch overhang, what I did was I just took um, I took this piece of three quarter inch PVC, taped a pencil to it, and just ran it around the edge like this to give me the uh, one, it's probably an inch and a quarter overhang. So I used my pocket hole jig and secured the boards next to with pocket holes and I needed 
all this stuff over here just to get it done. Bunch of clamps. But now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to hit it with the belt sander. And then uh, after that's done, I'll cut the shape out. I just hit it with a 60 grit belt using my new belt sander. For and now I'm going to flip it over and uh, cut out the circle. I'll be going over this again. I just want to get the make sure that everything's going to work with the circle before I invest too much time in the sanding. Okay, here I pull out my trusty Bosch hammer drill that I bought about 10 years ago and I haven't used in about six years. And I have a four inch hole saw from a hole saw kit that I got at Harbor Freight. Now my test hole went perfect that I did on a separate board without filming. And in this portion, of course, I started having some trouble with the, uh, with the hammer drill. I don't know if it's the clutch. I'm not sure. I'm not really familiar with the inner workings of a hammer drill. All I can say is that at one point, it actually, uh, the motor was firing up, but it wasn't turning the hole saw itself. So what I did was I switched over from number one to number two on the uh, side of the drill and then it started working again. So it's something I'm gonna have to look into. If anybody knows what might be wrong, please leave it in the comment box below. I could need some help on that. So I did manage to get the hole cut and it will accept now the three inch down pipe from the gutters. So last night before I called it a night, I went back and flipped the tabletop over and I filled all these gaps with some uh, exterior grade uh, wood glue just to prevent any kind of polyurethane from seeping through because what I'm going to do now is put a coat over this entire thing and this is merely to protect it because this is going to be face down to the water barrel. So there might be some splashing up of water and I just want to make sure that this stays protected. So here I'm applying the polyurethane to the back side of the tabletop. And this is basically just, again, to provide protection from any splash up water that might accrue from the rain barrel. This doesn't have to be pretty. It has to be protected from water. So I flipped it over and now it's time to do the top of the uh, tabletop. And it's kind of interesting to watch this in fast motion. You can really observe the ambering that takes place with an oil-based polyurethane. It really uh, adds some richness and golden tones to the wood. I've sanded this down twice, hit it with steel wool, and now after this coat of polyurethane, I'll let it dry and uh, add two more coats. going along the edge as well 
and the edge will of course receive two additional coats as well. I just got done putting on the first coat of polyurethane. I'm going to let this thoroughly dry, and I mean thoroughly dry, and then I'm going to rub it down with some steel wool and then put another coat or two on it. In fact, I see a spot that I missed right there, so I gotta hit that. And then I have the downpipe for the uh, for the gutter system, and it's got a first coat of brown spray paint on it. And then when this is dry, I'll be able to rotate the uh, three inch tube and paint the other side. So right now, gotta let everything dry. So last night I got it into my head that uh, what this rain barrel needs is an octagonal base. So I went on YouTube and checked out the internet and found out the calculations required to make an octagon and uh, set out to do it. Took a little finagling, but I got it done. Okay, it took a little bit of trimming. I wanted a uh, octagon that would allow me to sit the rain barrel on it, and the rain barrel is 27 and a quarter inches in diameter at the base. So what I have right now is 27 and a quarter right on the center of these two by fours. In order to secure the individual pieces of the octagon together, I got out my Craig pocket hole jig just kind of guessed at where the uh, two pocket holes should be placed and then uh, went about getting the boards prepared. I ended up using one and a half inch exterior grade pocket screws and when the job was complete they really held rock solid. So I decided to use an exterior grade pocket screw as well as a Tight Bond 3 exterior wood glue. The clamp, the face clamp from Craig came in handy to hold the angles together while I was uh, inserting the screws. The whole project of assembly probably took 20 minutes or so, and I was really pleased with the outcome. It uh, provided a very strong joinery and looks pretty good too. Just did a test fit, and it works. If I were to do it over again, I'd make each board probably another quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch shorter, so that the barrel sat more on the middle of the two by four. But you can see right there, it just covers those tip, those uh, those those miters. But it's covered. I think it looks pretty cool. So now I'm gonna. Now that it fits, I'll get on to finishing it. So the glue is dried and I hit this with a belt sander using a 120 grit just to make sure that all the seams were nice and smooth. And then I went over it with a uh, palm sander with a 180 grit. And it's probably, you know, like way overboard. I really didn't need to do it. But it was kind of fun because the miters turned out real nice and tight. And these pocket screws, I think this might have been the last one that I screwed together and that was just a little bit of a gap. But uh, the, the pocket screws are really holding it together really nice and tight. So it worked. Now I'm just gonna figure out how I wanna finish it. I can't decide if I'm gonna show Shugi bonnet or if I'm just gonna hit it with some of the dark stain 
and then polyurethane it. I don't know. I'll think about it. I decided to go Oxford Brown stain. What I'm going to do is put two coats of stain on this and then I'll polyurethane it just to give it some extra weather protection because it is going to be kind of half buried in the ground. Okay guys, I'm going to call it uh, a wrap for this video right here. Uh, in the next episode, we'll continue working on the barrel, getting that set up for rainwater collection. If you have any questions about what I've uh, done in this video or in any, any of the previous videos, please let me know. Any questions or comments or you know constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. I really want to try to make the videos uh, informative, entertaining, and let me know how I can improve them for you. Are they too long? Are they too short? Just let me know. And I, I, you know, I really welcome your feedback on it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.